Furies is a Vietnamese action thriller that's now on Netflix. It's a prequel to the 2019 movie Fury, which I haven't seen. So do you need to see the first movie to enjoy this one? A mysterious woman trains a trio of girls to take revenge on a criminal gang that abuses females. The three lady warriors then risk everything to challenge this corrupt empire. This has a flair to it that sort of resembles a John Wick movie. There's crazy action with a lot of martial arts and hand-to-hand -hand close quarters combat where anything and everything can become a weapon. Bright reds and blues from neon lights bathe the characters, giving them an otherworldly glow as they battle opponents in the seedy darkness. And then somehow, the bad guys, they never seem to run out of bullets or henchmen. Veronica Ngo stars in this and she also directs it, just as she did with her previous entry in the story, Fury. Now, she's a woman who recruits three other young women to carry out a revenge plot on this gang of just terrible people who see it as one of their life goals to abuse women. And what makes these three ripe for the assignment is that they each have come from a traumatic and abusive background, and some of which we get to see. So it's horrifying to watch what they endure, but it's also then easy to get behind their mission of killing all these abusers. The action's off the wall bonkers. I mean, it's exciting and it's edited really well, typically showcasing long takes where the camera will just spin around the environment to capture the different attacks as people are dodging and weaving and then being pummeled. And when there are quick cuts, these are done well and they're not overused. The violence, it's also typically stylized, but it doesn't shy away from showing the gore. Now, one thing that will be very noticeable right away is the blood spatter and the spurts. I mean, these are very clearly CGI, and they look like they've been added without a lot of ton of color correction so that they match the shading of a scene. Now, the blood is typically bright red, and while it is a cool effect to have it stand out as it flows, it's also very unrealistic. So that dampens some of the excitement and the tension. When there are fight sequences, these are frenetic and hectic. Melees happening in small spaces with a lot of stabby action and bones breaking. And there's this one scene that starts inside and then continues through the streets and alleys as our characters are being chased while escaping on a motorcycle. Now first, this is pretty unrealistic simply because they're riding what looks to be like a 250cc bike and the bad guys are chasing them on what looks to be 50cc mopeds. I mean, that may mean nothing to you. Just know, though, that the bigger the number, the higher the power and the speed. But if you suspend disbelief for this, the chase that ensues, it's pretty fun. I mean, it does look tremendously like a video game cutscene or something that's been shot entirely with a green screen. But the way the camera flies around the action, it creates urgent excitement. And really, I mean, come on, you, you have to suspend a ton of disbelief anyway. But this is a crazy action movie, just like with John Wick. So if that suspension of disbelief helps to move the story along and create situations that are suspenseful and engaging, it's not a big deal at all. The soundtrack also works to really complement the energy of the story and maintain urgency thanks to the driving beats of electronic and rock themes. The pulsing of the music, it worked to increase my heart rate just a bit, almost putting it in time with the thumps of the bass. And this may have just been with my screener copy, but the quality of the picture varied greatly throughout the film. Sometimes the saturation was turned way up, which then made colors abnormal and unnatural looking. And the contrast was also turned up greatly so that the blacks were crushed heavily and the whites, they just got to be blown out. And I did try this on several of my TVs, so it's not like the settings were just wonky on one and that's why it looked odd. I mean, this didn't ruin the watching experience for me, nor did it really affect the story at all. It was just something that stood out to me, so it could be bothersome to you, or at least noticeable, if the broadcast version is the same as my screener. The storytelling is quick, and it's almost rushed at times, even though this is just about two hours long. We get a ton of detail on one of the main characters, B, so we can get behind her actions since she's a sympathetic character. The others, though, that we meet don't get nearly as much development, and sometimes their info feels more glossed over or even forgotten, so they do feel a little more distant to us than B does. So many of the characters, especially on the bad guy side, come across as caricatures of villains. They're over the top in mannerisms and voice, shouting and tantruming over just about everything. Plus, their body language makes them laughable at how silly and juvenile they come across. But it is still entertaining, and it makes them very easy to root against. At the core, the story is simple, but it retains some mysterious elements where answers and resolutions are held back until towards the end of the story. Now, I do like that because it keeps the intrigue going for as long as possible. But it also does mean that sometimes, especially when there isn't an action sequence going on, the story begins to feel long. 
Now, not every scene does this, but there are enough where the pace dips to make it observable. And because the story is fairly simple, it's easy to go along with just about everything and have fun ride for what it is. I mean, there's not any deep thought that needs to occur to pick up on the narrative. What we see is what we get. And for an extreme action film, that's all really that needs to be accomplished. Now, overall, I think you can have a lot of fun with Furies. The acting is melodramatic or overdone at times, but the fighting and the choreography are executed wonderfully, making up for any character silliness that we may experience. Not all of the effects are convincing, but the action does create intense moments thanks to skillful camera work and the lack of cutaways in the editing. The simplicity of the narrative creates an easy-to-follow storyline, allowing audiences to become engrossed in the fights and not get bogged down by overly complex characters or plot points. If you want crazy action, this fits the bill, and it is something that's easy to have fun with. There's sex, no nudity, a ton of profanity, and almost non-stop brutal violence. I give Furies 3.5 out of 5 couches. So what are some excellent action movies that you just love to watch? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.